talk to me how difficult it is as we, we have a look through the track. Corner 12 is the one that everybody talks about. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, you can have a look at the track. It seems pretty simple when you look at it. A couple of straights and a few bends, not as many as some of the other tracks would have. But it's actually one of the most difficult tracks um, to ride and learn. I spoke with Brock Parks about it. It's his first time here, and he said that, you know what, that final sector into that turn 12, very difficult to master. What is the key to it? Late braking, early braking, bravery, stupidity? <laughs> a little bit of everything. But the thing is, is because there's not so many corners at this circuit, the times are very, very close. Um, and I guess that's what he's trying to find, is that little half of a tenth here or there. Um, it's what he's got to try and find, what all the riders have got to find. And that's what makes this track so enjoying to, to ride and especially watch as a spectator because you just see all of the slip streaming down those long straights um, into the braking duels and in, into all of those tight corners there's some high speed stuff through the middle turns four and five as well so it's a track that's got everything and on top of that the riders have to deal with the immense heat that we've got here this weekend i was going to talk to you about the heat it was searingly hot during practice and qualification uh, yesterday a little bit cooler today trackside temperatures were as high as 45 degrees yesterday but just a little bit cooler today which will be a relief for the riders as we look at the starting grid hazik farus will be on super pole in the underbone 150 is tidy his fellow malaysian alongside him in fact uh, an all Malaysian front row of the grid, Hafiz Arofa, a good result for him on the Yamaha. Uh, McKinley Kyle Paz is the championship leader. Remember, we've only had two races. The veteran Ahmed Fazli Sham is alongside him and Akid Aziz on the second row of the grid. On to row three, again, Malaysia dominating the things. Uh, Amal Arif Musa is seventh, Faiz Zekri eighth, Mahandi, uh, Mohammed Afendi Rosli. Uh, on the team, one for all, ninth on the Yamaha. Interesting how many Yamahas are in that top 12. Pitapong Luboimpong, the best of the, the ties. He's on 10th, row four of the grid, alongside uh, Richie Tarore from uh, Indonesia and Rosaim and Mohamed Said from the Cardinals racing team. As we carry on our, our list of the, the riders who are starting, Kupita Krejna, former champion. Uh, he's on the a private factory, SND factory racing rapido. Good to see him still in the mix, but a long way down on row five. Alongside him, Shao Amin, Fitri Asraf Razali, Wawan Wello on the Honda, uh, Eamon Asman also on the Honda. The Yamaha of Murabil Bitoni is on 18th position on the grid. It is a fairly packed grid, I can imagine. Corner number 12 is going to be pretty, pretty tight. Fernando Mazzato, he had a great start to the season. He won one race in Kuala Lumpur, but uh, is down here on 19th position alongside LD Satamahendra and Agun Fakrul. On the Yamaha 22 is uh, Shah Kairul Hisham alongside the young Australian Travis Hall and Luke uh, Luth Harith Irwan from Indonesia. And then we complete the first 10 rows Awayu Aji Tilaksana, the uh, Lakan Lok, one of the eight nations represented uh, this weekend here in Thailand. Uh, Gunmi from Japan. Japan don't often put too many races in the Underbone 150cc. We'll see if there's a, a few wild cards when we go up to Suzuka on row 10 of the grid while we saw the three riders taking us through. So it's a fairly packed grid out there, Steve, and we'll talk about that corner because there will be plenty of action plenty of activity when they go into that final corner because in the underbones they bunch up immensely they certainly do and uh, of course the smaller the bikes the longer the straights appear because the top speeds are a lot slower the more chance to slipstream and the closer that everybody is when they get to the braking area and of course that number 12 if you can get out of that corner first you're pretty much assured of winning the race. So it's critical on the last lap that you dive through. We're going to see four or five guys uh, or girls uh, nipping up that inside and trying to uh, get that uh, final line into the, the start-finish uh, line and get that flag first. We've seen it many times before. It's a place of action. Keep an eye out on it. The other thing, though, that everybody needs to be careful of is you can see in the background there the ripple strip with the green on the other side. We do have the ruling here because the track is so wide that if both of your wheels go into that green section there, uh, you get a warning and you can be penalised. And if it happens uh, too many times in the race, um, we've got people spotting for it out there, marshals are spotting for it, you can be disqualified. So keep an eye on that too. The riders have to stay on the race circuit just to add another dimension to it as well. Mike 36 there, Fendi Ross in 11th place on the grid on the Yamaha I tell you there's Yamahas in the first 11 12 13 positions 
in this race, which is quite remarkable because Honda are really well represented. What can explain that? Well, yeah, it is funny you mentioned that because I did see uh, Warwin Wello um, down in 16th position on the grid. Uh, well, he actually holds a lap record here at a 59.9 um, set earlier this year. So, uh, you know, Warwin Wello is one of the guys uh, on the Honda, the first Honda in the grid. 16 bikes until you reach that first Honda. It's pretty amazing stuff. This is the warm-up lap, and uh, there's two long straights to get us underway. There's this one coming into the right-hand corner, then the long straight until they go down to the hairpin at the end. Uh, long circuit for, for the Underbone 150 cc's, as we mentioned, close to five kilometers in distance. The track surface looks terrific. We've had a lot of rain over the last few days here in Boran, but it doesn't seem to have affected the track. No, absolutely not. I mean, uh, one thing you can say about this uh, Chang International Circuit, it, 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 it is top class, and it doesn't matter whether it's Underbone 150s or MotoGP which come here. Everybody gets the same treatment. It's all top class. The track is prepared beautifully. I mean, have a look at that. I mean, it's picturesque out there. The perfect place um, to go racing. And once again, you can just see there on the warm-up lap is some of the riders just testing uh, all the limits. Um, and you can see how easy it is to run off the track as well. So, um, as I said before, the officials will definitely be having a look at it um, as uh, everybody heads out for the warm-up lap. Just um, getting those slicks batted in. Not much you can do about it now. Hope that all the practice they've done is uh, everything in hand and uh, they can have a good race. This is the warm-up lap. Interesting that uh, there's quite a bit of pace being put on. I think that's Hazik Virus, who we've seen lead on uh, both of the previous races that took place in Kuala Lumpur on round one for the Underbones. Uh, Hazik is one of the Malaysian riders who we keep expecting, or I keep expecting for him just to make that little step up forward. He's currently, um, what was he, 18 points, so 23 points off the championship lead, which is held by McKinley Kyle Paz from the Philippines on the Yamaha. McKinley Kyle Paz qualified third fastest in Super Bowl. He'll be on the front row of the grid. Yeah, he's definitely put himself into a good position there for Fernando Masato, I think he's back down the grid a little bit. He sits second in the championship at the moment. So, uh, McKinley Cole Paz has uh, really got himself, as far as the championship goes, in a really good starting position. But as we know in this class, it doesn't matter. If you qualify on any one of the top three rows of the grid, you've still got a chance uh, to win the race. In fact, uh, we've got so many winners in this class already, it's going to be very hard to pick. You can see how that much that uh, turn 12 tightens up as well, Des. It's actually more than 90 degrees, so it, it sort of sucks you into going in deeper than you might want to. It's a perfect start. There is Hazik Farouz, who will be the pole sitter, uh, lapping an average speed of 171.7. Fastest lap of 202.416. Wasn't the fastest in qualification, but once it came to the Super Bowl, that's when he really did manage to up his uh, tempo. So the Super Bowl, which is done for the top 15 riders in the underbone, just to sort the men out from the boys. Bike 36, Fendi Rosley, another of the Malaysians. Fendi third in the championship standings behind the Filipino pairing of uh, McKinley Calpaz and Fernando Mazato bikes one, two, three and 17 respectively. Starts in 11th on the grid, does Fendi Rosley? We're all just about set, it's always an early moment in the grid. Red lights will go off and we are underway. Round three of the Underbone 150 cc's. Hazik Farouz getting a nice clean getaway. No problems for him, everybody's got away nicely in this first corner. Be a nice relaxing moment for everybody to say, okay, the tension's gone. Now let's get on with the race. Oh, Absolutely. one's gone wide. Yeah, that could be, not sure who that was, uh, someone way back to, down the field, but it's uh, Baruz at the moment who leads away as they head down that straight. You can already see them tucked in and the, those slipstreaming jewels uh, already. It's, of course, number 93 that's uh, ran off early on, and uh, yeah, that's um, Luth Howard Irwin. Ran off, so. On his debut yes. in Underbone, so maybe taken a little bit by surprise by uh, the attention of it all. But apart from that, everybody's got away quite nicely and very unusually. It's a bit of a procession at the moment with Hazik Firuz leading the way. 
Well, this is the most open part of this circuit, so this is uh, where they can sort of settle down and get a breath. But from this point on, when they head into turn four, as you can see, they're already three and four wide. And uh, now the underbones, they might have had a bit of a break, but they're up and running and the action starts now. It's still Hazik who is leading the way. This is the first of eight laps. There'll be plenty of jockeying for position. The final intention is to get yourself in pole position once you come into the final corner of the final lap. That's Aedes up there as well, as is um, uh, Hafiza Rofa doing a good job as they nip on the inside there. Good uh, job. But I've got to say that Hazik is doing a really good job at maintaining that lead out front. Um, and it looks like uh, that could be uh, Fernando Masato uh, who's joined that group as well from his qualifying position. Back, you see him there in fourth position, I think it is, on the Uber race. He was, he was way down in 17th, I think you've got that right. But uh, Tazik, who's leading the way, the, the green livery of the 1X, 2X, TKR racing of Hafiza Rufa, not far behind them. But Hazik takes a, a nice, tight corner, just ease off a little bit as we come through the end of lap one. And it will indeed be Akid Aziz who leads. Hazik drops down into fourth. Wawa Wella has come up into second. Hafiza and Hazik is at Saidi. Ahmed Fazli Sham, Richie Tarora, McKinley Carl Paz was in fourth, down in eighth, but less than a second separating one from eight. Yeah, well, one thing we know about Wawa Wella is he certainly knows how to ride around this circuit. He has, um, as we said, he does hold the current lap record at a 59, uh, 159. So, uh, didn't qualify well, but uh, once again used those two long straights to get from that uh, bad qualifying position. And puts himself up with a chance of victory at the moment. Look at how wide the entry are in these turns as well. There, so it uh, really does give the riders a great opportunity to slip spring up the inside. Interesting for Akira Aziz, who was leading at the end of the first lap. He was the fastest in qualifying, but 15th fastest when they came to the Super Bowl. So something clearly went a, a little bit all right. And not only was he fastest in qualifying, he was well fastest half a second of a, a half a second quicker than anybody else on the track. Is that close enough for you guys? Look at them now <laughs> as they head back into that fast turn four and five, breaking everywhere up the inside. Uh, it's too hard to call. It's one of the 1XOX machines out front, uh, but he does run off the track there. A few of the guys off the track need to be careful. You can't do that too many times, otherwise you'll get a penalty. 1XOX really enjoying a little domination there at the front alongside sandwiching Aki Daziz and Hazik Farus. Through. Bike 57 is uh, Faye Zekri Sabri. He's the man just in the lead at the moment. It is all about jockeying. Alongside him, you've got Akid. The purple livery of Akid and uh, Hazik, easy to pick out. The green, easy to pick out as well of the 1XOX riders. The thing to remember about this race is it's, uh, it's eight laps long, so not too many laps. Uh, so you really do need to stay near the front. If you sort of like drift back to 15th or 16th, could find yourself in a little bit of trouble because oh the way to explain these uh, the time difference between super pole and the times that they do on their own two seconds a lap is because when they do super pole there's no slipstream this front group can go two seconds a quick lap quicker because of the slipstreaming speed compared to someone on their own so you can't fall off the back of the group before you've gone now he's a roofer leading the way Wawan Wello in the yellow the Indonesian just being nipped in by the to purple clad Akid and Hazik. And that little group are seeming just to pull away a little bit. Not by much, but there's a, a little pack of eight there with also hanging on to the very tail is uh, bike 179, Richie Tarora. Bit of touchy there, bit of touchy. Three or four wide once again. Ooh. Oh, we've got a faller. Oh, how lucky is that? Not sure who that is. I didn't quite see the number. It's one of the 1XOX machines, let's hope. It's not our Why you Aji Chilaksana oh. is the man who's just drifted uh, a little bit into the rider there and throws all the debris off the bike and gets straight back on and curses himself. Gee, I feel so sorry for him. He was a definite run front runner, um, you know, but he hasn't it hasn't got his way at this uh, meeting. We haven't really talked too much about him, but uh, he's up and continuing again. So uh, good luck to him. But I reckon that uh, it's pretty much all over for him as far as a good position in this race. Waiwaji had a zero points and a nine points on race number one. He'll have to work really hard to get back in. I'm just seeing how much time he lost as Hazik leads through with Akid Aziz. These two here, he is, he just loses the edge. Yeah, just uh, snipped up the inside there. He got taken out, actually, did. by, didn't quite see who that was. Like a critical maneuver racing machine. But, 
uh, took him out, but uh, we reserve the right to that. But uh, probably not his fault. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that same team are hoping that uh, Hafiz Arofa can keep this lead as they come round turn 12. It's uh, four abreast. As they come over the line at the end of lap three, it's a visa from Hazik and Akid Wawamwelo fourth. Mazato's made his way through. Wayuna Groho and Razayman Mohamed side. Uh, Fazli Shama, McKinley, Kyle Paz again. It's all pretty tight. 1.25 seconds between one and nine. Well, McKinley, Kyle Paz, he definitely knows how to uh, ride well and uh, leads the championship at the moment. Uh, a win last time out in um, round one of the series. Of course, they did compete in round two in Australia, the underbones, unfortunately, but they're certainly making up for it now. It's been a while since these boys have been on track, but they're having fun out there. Why are you Chelaxana? What a recovery that is. He only lost 13 and a half seconds on everybody else. He came off, picked, uh, dusted himself down, got back on, and he's 13 seconds drifted. It's a long way behind, but not beyond the realms of possibility. He might be able to pick up a point. Yeah, perhaps if he works hard, he might be able to get himself back in the points. Uh, there, uh, out on track uh, as it's Zaidi. He was up near the front earlier on in the race as well. You can see he takes that outside line around the outside of everybody. Puts himself up about fourth or fifth position there on the red machine just out there on the right hand. He's made some good ground up by going wide there. Talk to me about the bunching, Steve. I'm a non competitive racer. Gosh, that looks terrifying being in the midst of that. You'd it, love it. It is crazy. It's a, it's a crazy thing to be in a slipstreaming jewel. And you can just see there. Up the inside was that a kid as is, I'm not sure who that was, but uh, contact every at every moment. These guys have to be inch perfect out on that track. They've got to take their chances. It's like being in a 100-mile-an-hour uh, traffic jam is what it's like. And we've got a little bit of daylight at the, the front. Uh, I think it's Afiz Arufa who is still leading that way. And, gosh, that's a nearly half a second lead, which you don't really get. And he's being well protected. Um, support there coming from Wayuna Groho. The lead in the way is Hafiz Arufa. Comes in splendid isolation into turn 12. I wouldn't um, get too excited just yet. I reckon that uh, Hafiz Arufa, although he's probably about to set um, one of the fastest laps in the race, uh, his, that was just nearly his fastest lap in the race. Um, thumbs out, but uh, thumbs up. But uh, he's still going to try and get past that big, long uh, start straight off of turn one. I reckon he's going to get pulled back to the pack. Won't take long for that uh, speeding pack behind him to pull it back. But he's doing a great job out front, doing everything he can. Got a difficult boat. It was 0.8 of a second the lead, but they are closing in. Aki Daziz and Wawanwelo, and they have indeed closed that gap now. They're right on the back wheel of Hafiz Arofa. Might have been a, a tactic from him just to see if he was able to get away, and then he's swallowed up by the pack. And, uh, one second lead is diminished and he drops down to fourth. Yeah, what you need to do is you need to, you know, the leading guys in this race almost have to work together and try and stretch the field out. If they can stretch the field out and get what you want is the least amount of guys in that group near the end of the race. But uh, this racetrack just makes it insane for the race. We're seeing that right now because there's like, what, 15 guys? or more in that leading pack at the moment. It's incredible. We're just beyond halfway in this Underbone 150cc. It's uh, round three of the Asian Road Racing Championship Series, sponsored by Idemetsu. As there's another player, um, man just has to stand up tall there. I think it was Hazik Farouz who got a little bit bunched up. This is uh, round races three of the season for the Underbone 150s as Wallowello goes into the lead for the very first time. I know he's somebody that you keep a close eye on, Warren Wello, and uh, with due regard as well, oh. Manoff and Bang flat out on the back. I hope he's okay, that the, the like, movement's yeah, good. That's uh, Gupta Kresner who's uh, gone down there, so unfortunately for Gupta Kresner, it's uh, all over. He gets himself up and uh, cleared out of the way, but uh, at the end of the day for him, but the action is still thinking fast up front. Well, there is Gupita, stretches there very, very quickly. He looks all right as the Leading riders come round, it'll be three laps to go, and as they go over the start line, it's Aki Daziz, the fastest in pole, has got himself back in front once again, ahead of her visa bike 28. Ahmed Fazli Sham, who's been there all the while, and McKinley Kyle Paz, the championship leader, bike 123. He makes his first move towards the, the front, and McKinley Kyle Paz may well be saying, setting down a mark here. I'm the championship leader, you've got to get past me. Yeah, well, the first half of this race, Des, it's all about 
just trying to stay out of trouble. And that's what uh, uh, Akita Ziz and um, McKinley Cole Paz have done. They've stayed out of trouble um, and kept uh, a bit of the, a bit back. But now, whatever you've got, now's the time to explode. Now's the time to give it everything you've got and go for that win. And guys like McKinley Cole Paz have certainly got it if they can do it. Waiwaji Trilaxana, who we saw crash out before, hasn't been able to close any gap. He's still 13 seconds adrift in 22nd place. So a nasty moment for him, but up at the front, we have got uh, in the lead uh, Akid Aziz. And Hazik Farus is there as well. Hazik is bike 27, Akid bike 13. It's Hazik who is leading the way and dragging uh, uh, Wayu Haji with him. No, Wayu Haji has got Wayu Nagroho with him. And also McKinley Cal Paz makes a, a little move through as well. Bike 123, Warren Wello in the yellow has dropped right back into that group as Hazik makes his move. Back to the shaft up there as well. Good to see him, um, and uh, really happy to see that Wawan Wello is uh, competitive again. But uh, he's dropped right back, hasn't he? Something happened there, hasn't it, yeah. to Wawan Wello? He's a long way back as Akid Aziz makes a, a real movement. 36 is Fendi Rosley, who we focused uh, pretty much. Fendi Rosley started 11th on the grid, fifth fastest overall in qualifying, but there's been a bit of a break there as we come into with two laps to go. It'll be Hazik Farouz leading from Ronogroho, Akid Aziz Effendi, Richie Turo, Juan Wello in six, but that lead is 0.75 of a second for Hazik Farouz. You can see now though, how with the, as the, the pace of the race has gone on, it is starting to stretch out a little bit. This could be good news for um, Hazik Farouz out in front. Uh, he's hoping that by the time he gets to the end of this uh, start, or this uh, long main back straight here, that uh, he's only going to have four or five bikes to contend with rather than the 20 that he's had so far. And that group is physically smaller now. Only, he was only 15th fastest in qualifying, 202.416, maybe saving something for the race itself, but we're midway through the penultimate lap here in the Underbone 150cc. Hazik Farouz of Malaysia leads the way as Gupita Krejna in the pits, looks on glumly. And uh, still Hazik leads the way, but look how quickly they're able to close on him. Wayu has made the move, Akid has made a move, Effendi's made the move. And suddenly again, a runaway leader is caught up in the group with uh, just over one lap to go. Absolutely, so, so tight uh, at the moment. Uh, Azik Fariz uh, has got a lot of work to do. So has uh, McKinley Cole Paz, if he wants to maintain that lead in the championship. They're all in position at the moment to strike. Number 46 out there, Fazli Sham. He's always been near the front of this race too. He has, and Fazli Sham's an experienced campaigner. He'll be looking just to improve on a, a season. But uh, he's always there or thereabouts. Uh, Fazli Sham, only one XOX, didn't pick any points of flow in Kuala Lumpur or in Sepang, so would like to change that one. We are coming through with uh, the final corner of the penultimate lap, and you saw there that Akid Aziz was able to squeeze through. Juan Wello's got himself back in again, a little wobble from Juan Wello, but as they come over the line for the final time, Akid from Wawan, Hafiza, Wayne Groho, Taroa, and is outside him, McKinley Kyle Paz, 0.767 behind the championship leader. Akid Aziz has got about a three bike length lead at the moment. We know that that's going to get eaten up by the end of this straight. But uh, once again, he's just got to tuck in as tight as he can. Has a look over his shoulder. You don't need to do that. You know they're there. Yeah, they've not exactly disappeared, <laughs> have they? <laughs> like a, gone up like a, a magic puff. Uh, but there he is. He's caught down very quickly. Aki tries to just grab his own space and goes from first to ninth, tenth. Middle of the pack. My word. He certainly doesn't. Uh, pay to lead onto that back straight, especially on the last lap at the moment. But uh, is that the number 57 out there? Faye the Zekri, yeah. that would be a real surprise if Faye Zekri would come through for one well He drags uh, Wayu, uh, Wayu Nagroho with him as they go just down the little dip. And wow, this is going to be a race to corner 12 and Bedlam will follow. Richie, Richard Turai is up there too on the number 179 machine. Just see him diving up the inside into second position. He's in good positioning for this race now. Um, probably so is uh, the number 98. I think he's in a good position too. That's, uh, is that Zaidi? 
um, up there in fourth position. It's going to be between these top four or five guys now as they head out uh, through the top end of the circuit. 28 leads the way. Hafiza Ropa, he led early on in the race, then got swallowed up in the pack. Now he's come to the four once again with half a lap to go and a, a bike length of uh, a, a lead of two or three bike lengths as he takes the sharp left as they go down the hill. He's being pursued by a whole posse. Included in that is Richie Tour in the black livery. And indeed, Richie Tour leads everything to swallow up Hafiz Arufa. Whoa, it's going all over the place. Fendi Rosley all over the place as they head into that uh, final turn now. And the corner is perfectly taken and the victory is going to go at the end to Akid Aziz. He was on pole, he led four or five times and timed his run to perfection onto the final corner. Richie Turo, Afendi Rosley, Wainer Groher, Afiza Rufa completing the top five, McKinley Kalpaz in sixth. Yeah, what a brilliant result for Akid Aziz. I mean, he really deserved that. Uh, his, uh, McKinley Kalpaz uh, leads a championship, of course, a teammate there. Um, that's a, it's a good race for those guys certainly was how we timed that one because it was so condensed coming into that final corner as we knew it would be but he seemed to just pick the moments pick the time pick the line pick the acceleration point it's also been a bit of an uber racing lockout this year they've won uh, three from three races so far different uh, winners each one of their riders has won a race we've had uh, mckinley cole has uh, won the first race of the year then uh, Masato won the second race, and now this. Akid is uh, not left out, gets some points on the board, a valuable 25 points. What a brilliant r result for him and uh, his uh, Yamaha and the Uma racing team. That was an exciting way to do it. Uh, he certainly had to earn it, Des. It wasn't given to him, that's for sure. It's his second podium of the season for Akid Aziz. The Uma Racing, but uh, the Maju Asia team, as opposed to the Uma Racing Philippines team. I'm sure there's some internal rivalry going on between the Absolutely. Uma Racing guys. But there is the man, Akid Aziz. He was quickest in qualifying. He blew it in the Super Bowl, started 15th, but timed it to absolute perfection. Let's get the confirmation. Akid Aziz on the Yuma Racing Yamaha uh, wins it. 0.143 ahead of Richie Taroa, who we kept talking about, did well. Yamaha, one through eight. Um, team One Floors, Effendi Rosley in third place. Ryan Nagroho, Afiza Rofa on the win, XOX in fifth. McKinley Kalpaz, not a bad result on the Yamaha sniper for the Filipino. Uh, less than 0.8 of a second behind. Is it Zaidi in seventh? Mohamed Murabil Vitoni on the Yamaha in eighth place. Wawanwello, who was in the lead, he was there or thereabouts. He'll be frustrated, the Indonesian, to come in ninth, uh, low down the points. Poor old Hazik Farouz, what happened there? He was <laughs> leading much of the time, ends up just in 10th place, Adi Brosley, uh, 11th with uh, Aldi Satya, 12th. Faiz Zekri was another who was in that leading group for a long time. Rosaiman, 14th, and Pitapong Luboin Peng, the uh, tie completing the scoring points. Gunmi just outside of it. Carrying on further down, Fernando Mazzato, second place coming into this race. He ends up in 20th, out of the points. Travis Hall, 11 and a half seconds off the pace. Wayo Ajitrilaksana, he ended up 16 seconds off the pace, which, uh, considering that he fell midway through, isn't too uh, disappointing a result because he still finished ahead of all of these races. Uh, Eamon Asman, Gupita Grezna, Amal Arif Musa all crashing out. Luke Harith completing the race despite coming off but more than a minute down. But there is the race winner and it always feels good, Steve Martin. You remember that feeling? <laughs> it's a long time ago now, but uh, I'll tell you what, uh, you can be happy, the team are happy. Uh, what a brilliant uh, result uh, there. And of course, Richie Richard Toraya, another man that's going to be happy and have a good uh, Day today and a good night uh, and prepare for the races tomorrow but to, what a brilliant underbone race it was it was just so much going on so many potential winners uh, in that class and if you do make one mistake you can go from being a winner to out of the points in fact um, we saw we spoke about Travis Hall 11 seconds off the lead 20th position not that far time wise but I'll tell you what uh, a lot of people in that 11 seconds. There certainly were a lot of people in that 11. Let's talk about Hazik uh, Farus, who was in that leading group for such a long time and ends up in, in 10th place. He must wonder what he's done wrong. Yeah, well, it's positioning. It's basically what he's done is, um, you know, like he led as much as he could, but he's obviously during the race 
made some sort of mistake that's put him in the wrong track position. Um, other people have benefited from that and he's gone back because these races are all about mental, the mental thinking about perhaps not trying to go as fast as you can at every point, but rather there's, it's about trying to think, you know what, if I, I could just stay behind this guy and slipstream him a bit and then um, continue on, but he didn't do that. Okay, let's see if we can get some reaction. I think our intrepid reporter, Wheeling, is down talking to the front three. All right, thank you. That's down here uh, on the grid with Afendi Rosley, who picked up a third place finish. Yeah, Afendi, you seem to really know your way around here, Chang International Circuit, because you always find a way to step on the podium every single year. Okay, firstly, shukur alhamdulillah. Today... I think this race, uh, race one in Thailand may be lucky for me because from start the race, many riders fighting like crazy. Eh? So uh, after four lap, five lap, I just relax, cool my machine, and I I don't know how I can finish the number three because many riders. Rider very crazy and no racing line, so I just follow, 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 and then oh, I have a space. Then I go to uh, finish line. So shukur alhamdulillah. Thank you to my team. Thank you to uh, my sponsor, One for All team, and thank you also thank you to Malaysian people and support me. Then this one, <laughs> this is uh, my supporter from my. Majisukan uh, PDRM call. Okay, congratulations, Afendi. And coming in second place today, picking up his first uh, podium in the underbone class and his first podium for his team, Pro Liner 549 Kabuchi Racing. Congratulations, Richard. First podium. Tell us, battling with 20 riders for eight laps, how do you manage to finish in second? Yeah, uh, for the rest, I'm stay focused in top group and for finishing in last lap I'm good feeling and I don't know what to say uh, but I'm first time get podium in Asia Tro Racing Champion. Uh, terima kasih untuk my team dan yang sponsor family teman semua yang sudah mensupport. Terima kasih banyak. Semoga saya bisa berikan yang lebih baik lagi. Terima kasih. Okay, congratulations, Richard, and picking up his first win of the 2019 season, Mama Akiazis. Akiz, so throughout the race, we can see that you and Hazik did try to run away, but obviously it's not possible because everyone was so competitive today. Tell us, how did you finish the race? Okay, pertama sekali, syukur Alhamdulillah. Pada bulan Ramadan yang mulai ini, saya dapat champion lah. Terima kasih kepada tim saya, uh, Umar Racing, uh, saya punya sponsor dan saya punya family. Uh, race kali ini memang sengit uh, sebab ada kelompok yang banyak untuk bersaing ke depan. Tapi saya cuba buat yang terbaik uh, untuk dapatkan champion ini. Okay, thank you Azhaqit. Congratulations and we will wait for the podium ceremony coming up next. As a non-racer, Steve, I'm, I'm always amazed at uh, how cool the riders are just a few minutes after being involved in a, a situation like that where they're 10 or 12 abreast coming into the final corner, finds the space, and then he's cool. I'd like to thank my sponsors, I'd like to thank, thank my family. Yes, I'm very happy to win. How would you keep so cool? Well, they're cool as cucumbers, aren't they? And I'll tell you what, uh, you watch this, Des, because this will show you how they do it. Uh, definitely, uh, it's a question that I do not know the answer to. <laughs> Hadik Fairuz was on pole position and got off to a good start and generally had a good race. He will be kicking himself the fact that he only picked the points for 10th position, just the... Uh, uh, which is a frustrating end for him because he and Akid Aziz, the eventual race winner, were always there or thereabouts, as was Juan Wello, as were the three XOX guys, certainly until uh, you had the instance with Ayaji Trilaksana. Yeah, of course, everybody in the pit box were, had their fingers crossed and they needed to be crossed because look at the action out there on track at the moment. There were bikes absolutely everywhere. That leading pack was amazing. Then bang, Trilaksana went down. The team 
were oh, impressed at that point, but he did manage to get back up and continue, which is good to see. He did. Uh, it meant that Hafiza Ropal would take over the cudgel for one XOX. And at one stage, he had a, a lead that was over a second. And for a, a, a moment, just a moment, I thought, heck, we might have a runaway winner in an underbone. But it doesn't happen like that in this class of racing. No, because that's you forgot about that big, long back straight, didn't you, Des? And they all <laughs> got him again. And uh, unfortunately for him, that lead was gone. He did continue on, though, and tried as hard as he could. But Hafisa Rosa, Rosa got uh, sucked up. Then, of course, number 23 went down. Cooper Kresner, uh, luckily for us, he was OK, too. But uh, he gave it his all out on track. Of course, he was being attended to there. But uh, he will be back on track tomorrow. And then this is uh, coming into the final a uh, lap and a half or so, and Hazik makes a move there. Hazik looks like he's going to get away, and then he suddenly literally swallowed up. He went from first to tenth in the twinkling of an eye. It meant that Akid was able to just begin to take a, a little bit of advantage. There's Akid as he's leading, going over the start-finish line uh, ahead of the, the final lap, but it got congested, as it always does. And then keeping your keeping your mind clear at this stage, that's the bit I, I really cannot fathom. Yeah, what was the kid thinking at this point in time when he had, looked like he had no chance? But then into that final corner, the perfect line, he got that just right as others got it wrong, stayed on the track, tucked in under the uh, screen and put his hand in the air. Victory for the kid as is. And joy in the pit lane as well. Uh, there was also an excellent result for Richard Taroa who will move into the point standings. McKinley Kalpaz eventually coming in sixth place. Right, let's head down towards the um, podium where Wheeling will be talking us through the winners and the prize givers. We'll begin the podium ceremony for the under 150cc race win. Coming in third place today from team one for all, Ama Afendi Rosley. And in second place today from Team ProLiner 549 Kabuchi Racing Team, Richard Tarore. And today's race one winner from Uma Racing Yamaha Maju Moto Asia Team, Muhammad Akit Aziz. We also like to invite the team manager from Uma Racing Yamaha Maju Moto Asia Team to join the riders on the podium. And we will now stand for the National Anthem of Malaysia. Okay, slight technical error in terms of the national anthem. We will return to the uh, podium as soon as we are sorted with the national anthem. That shouldn't take away at all from the performance of Akid Aziz.
would now like to invite Mr. Tong Chai Wong Sawon, the president of FFSCT, to present the riders with their trophies. Coming in third place today from Team One for All, Malaysian rider Mohammad Afendi Rosli. In second place from Team Proliner 549 Kabuchi Racing Team, Indonesian rider Richard Tarore. And coming in first place today from Team Uma Racing Yamaha Maju Moto Asia Team, Malaysian rider Mohamed Akil Aziz. And today's best team award in the underbone class goes to Uma Racing Yamaha Maju Moto Asia team. Our thanks to Hui Ling for the presentation and also to Tong Chai Wong Sawan, the president of the FM SCT, for the prize giving. There's uh, one of the pictures that will adorn the newspapers, local and hopefully international tomorrow. Akid Aziz, fastest on qualification, wasn't on Super Bowl, but came through perfectly at the end to pick up uh, his first victory of the season, and that will be good enough to move him into third place in the overall championship standings. As we have a look, McKinley Kyle Paz continues to lead. He picked up uh, 10 points for sixth place. He's got 51 points. Effendi Rosley, very happy with his third. Great interview, Effendi. 44 points for him. Akid moves up into the top three on 41 points. Behind them, Mazato had a pointless uh, uh, day but 36 points still. Wawanwello, 30 points in fifth. Amral Araf Musa makes it three Malaysians in the top sixth on 27. Richie Turo's reward is a, a joint seventh um, on 25 points alongside Peter Pong Lubwenpang, who was out of the points in race one today. Moving a little bit further down, they are the top eight positions.